everything contained in this video is permanent. Except for my self-respect, that's wavering at best. G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and today I'm going to create art with permanent markers. I have these lying around on the desk and I just thought, you know what, I can make art with that. That's like my go-to if I just see something random. Double adapted PowerPoint, I can make art with that. Scissors, I can make art with that. Toilet paper, I can make art with that. I can make art with that. But as many of you know, one of my favorite things to play around with are office supplies. They're not intended to create beautiful imagery, not that that's what I make out of them, but it's fun to try using things for purposes that they weren't perhaps intended for to unleash their potential or just see how it feels. That sounded dirty for some reason. Ah, oh, goodness sake. So let's, uh, let's play around with it. That still sounded dirty. What is wrong with me? Let's try these out one at a time and using uh, just the tip, God say! I need to control my innuendos. In your end. <laughs> we have two types of permanent markers in three colors each. The first type is the uh, the go-to chisel tip permanent marker, which looks like this. Oh, that is so satisfying. It feels really nice. Now, of course, you can use the chisel tip like that. You could potentially a bit of a calligraphy look because of the angle. Oh, look at this. I've never done calligraphy before, but I feel like it's a gift. I feel like I have this. Maybe I should do a calligraphy video. Actual calligraphers watching this are like, this is terrible. There you go. <laughs> and then, of course, you can use the point of the the chisel, just the end here, uh, just for details, little dots, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to, you know, use the thick part of it. But if I want to get into the nitty gritty, I have these things, which are, uh, I mean, they're not quite brush tips. They're just sort of pointed permanent markers and they're smaller. They don't have a chisel. They do have a brush shaped tip. They're not very flexible. However, they would be good for detailing. And I have these three very uncreative colors. As you can see here, they're present in pretty much any pack of permanent markers that you get. The blue, the red, and the black. In fact, I bought them because I use them for my calendar to mark stuff and block stuff out and cross days off. That's what I got them for, but I'm going to use them for some creativity stuff today. So, oh, I forgot to demo the colors. We have the red, pretty straightforward. There is sort of a build up issue. If you layer it multiple times, it does build up in saturation, but it can sort of wreck the paper a bit. So it's hard to get like a solid, clean color or get any gradients. There's non-existent blending here. For example, if I lay the blue on top, you can see it creates a cool effect, quite a dark little stripe but I don't know perhaps within reason or within some very significant limitations that could be used for cool effect. Anyways they're the colors and the types I have to work with today. Uh, this piece of paper feels pretty small given that I feel like I could cover a large area with these so I'm gonna cut up a piece of paper to be about double this size to be about a three size and create something as ambitious as possible and this is a challenge mostly because of the permanence of it or specifically because I won't be sketching. I'm just gonna just put ink on paper and hope for the best. So there's no planning, there's no undoing, just permanent marker on paper. Let's get started. So to begin with, I laid down the closest thing to construction lines I can manage. Really lightly drawn outlines and silhouettes using my finest black permanent marker. Now with the color palette I had to work with, black, red, and blue, I thought it only fitting that I go for a particularly superhero, supervillain-esque theme with some very black, red, and blue characters, namely Carnage and Spider-Man from the Spider-Man series. So in the front here, you can see we have Carnage, who is being grappled by and yanked back by Spider-Man. Now, these are very, very simplistic silhouettes that I'm working with, but of course the most important thing to lay down from the beginning is the structure and the overall physicality of the characters. Once I have the basic scene laid out and the very, very rough structures of the characters put together, and I'm happy with that, I move on to creating some of the refined line work and shading. Because I have such solid colors and markers to work with, I try and use that as a strength rather than a limitation, really honing in on those solid edges and really rich black shaded comic book style areas in the piece. To create this comic book style feeling and really solidify the silhouettes of the characters, I use the thickest black permanent marker to create some solid areas of shadow on the leftmost areas of the character, just to make sure that we have some three dimensional aspects. I try and leave some very faint rim lighting and edge lighting around the character, especially where darker areas overlay on top of each other. And overall, try and go for a really intense aesthetic and variety of textures. I do the same with the blocking of the shadows and the Spider-Man figure, but without worrying about the costume, I first and foremost prioritize the anatomy of the character, shading in and distinguishing areas between the muscle groups. With the core shading laid down and some of the details on the visceral webs, veins and gore emanating from both of the characters, I move on to colors, specifically the 
red for carnage, leaving some areas of white just to make sure we get that separating aspect and create a little bit of contrast. And while we can't use any sort of blending or gradients, we can really go for that very intense look and double down on the solid colors we have to work with. Moving on back to Spider-Man, now that of course his anatomy has been laid down, I can go in and separate the areas of the costume with the various colors that are suited to them. And then once that's done, I can move on to detail and texture. Going back to my finest black fine liner and adding the web around Spider-Man's costume. This also helps create a nice three-dimensional effect from something that could be difficult to not make look flat because we're working with very flat, solid colors. And then moving on to the rest of the piece, adding some final details and textures to amp up the intensity of the piece, specifically through carnage, adding veins throughout his body. And then last but not least, very faintly and as lightly as possible, using some line shading and textures behind the characters to create an aesthetic of clouds and dust and rubble emerging from behind them as their fight wages on. So there you have it ladies and gentlemen with very minimal planning and no undoing this is my permanent marker challenge. I love the way this turned out. I really like the richness of the colors and it's funny that sometimes when you limit yourself to a certain medium or something that is generally restrictive, you find yourself working around those boundaries in a way that can end up creating a really bold sort of look. So this is the result of my challenge. Obviously there's no gradienting or blending or anything like that, but I feel like having worked around the restrictions of the rigidity of these markers, I am really, really satisfied with the result. Let me know what you think in the comments below and leave some suggestions for some future videos that you guys would like me to see and maybe some materials you'd like me to try. Otherwise, make sure to like this video if you enjoy the result. I don't know if I said that. Did I say that? Maybe I said that. If I didn't say that, I meant what I said and I said what I meant. Make sure to subscribe to Draw With Jazza for more fun with art three times a week. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And while you're at it, check out my shop where I sell eBooks, brushes, photo references, video courses, and more. There's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there. And you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel, Daily Jazza. That's it for now. And until next time, I'll see you later.